Hello, hello, hello. We are back with another shelf tour. It is not the morning. Remember how many times have I said I'm not a morning person? It's afternoon. That's probably for the best. I'm much more level-headed. I have caffeine in me. It's been ruminating in me, so I'm kind of like... It is not morning, but there's amazing light. Thanks to that light right there that I have set up. You can't see it, but I can. And you can see what I want you to see. Is this any better from filming in the morning? Today we're going to be looking at the third shelf down the line of my undoored shelf. The other shelf has doors. So today let's go ahead and just fuck this shit up. Let me fix my hat. We're starting off with quarters. We got 50 cents. One is from Alaska and the other is uh Hmm. <laughs> it's the 2020 bat quarter. Don't we hate it? That was such a bad idea. I mean, nobody really knew that this was going to happen. And that was kind of already set to be made in 2019. But it's still a pretty bad idea. It would have been a better idea to just make blank quarters. Peppermint essential oil. Now listen, before we go down the Facebook mom Karen path about essential oils, I do not believe that they can heal or cure cancer or do anything like that with, you know, please, if you have any conditions, seek medical attention. Um, I just like smelling them. I like diffusing them. Remember, I am a very olfactive individual. So I like smelling good and I like my room smelling good. And usually my room smells like either incense or essential oils. Ooh, ooh, that is crisp. I love, love, love. Peppermint essential oil for the morning is delicious. It's a great way to wake the fuck up, to put it lightly. Nest. Coco Woods Parfum. This one was a sample that I got from one of the farmer, former farmer? She's not a farmer. Former managers of the restaurant that I worked at. She and I have gotten pretty close, like with a friendship. She and I have this affinity for like the nicer things, I guess you could say. And so she always gets me um, fragrance samples from wherever it is that she goes. <sighs> Oh, oh, it's exactly what the word implies. Oh my God, it's like chocolate. It's such a delicious gourmand smell. I also like the roller ball. It's much nicer to, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put some on. <laughs> you didn't see that. This, I actually really like putting it on before going to sleep. Going to sleep with this smell? Oh my God. Oh, it's like you're rolling into a dream. So next up we have The Noir 29 by, I still don't know if it's Lilabo or Lelabo. Nobody told me in the comments, rude. Um, I could probably look it up, but I don't want to. I'd rather be wrong. It's a tiny little sample and this one I actually found it at work. It was sealed, it was in a sealed envelope. So it's not like, you know, I just found it on the floor I'm like, ooh, a vial. Whenever I smell this one, I breathe it out of my mouth because it's like I'm smoking. It doesn't smell like smoke. It doesn't smell like cigars or cigarettes or nicotine or anything like that. Oh, it's just like, it's like it, it has to travel, it has to travel. This is actually a really good smell. I, I have my thoughts about this one. At first, I will admit, I thought it either went bad 
or that somebody was trying to sneak alcohol into work which makes no sense because I found it at the bar. It does smell at first hit a little alcoholy, but then when you put it on, that's when it really starts to develop. Oh, and it smells so good. This one on the other hand, Ambrette number nine, also by Le Labo. And this one doesn't smell bad, but it doesn't necessarily smell good. Yeah, I can't really pick this one out. When I, mean, I put it on my skin, it's almost like it disappears and it just smells like flesh. And it doesn't smell like my flesh, it just smells like someone's flesh on my flesh. It's a strange smell, it's not really for me. But I like the little sample and I'm, I'm a glutton for punishment sometimes and I give things different shots. I'm a sucker for second chances and third chances and like last drop chances. Some more essential oil. This time it's eucalyptus, 100% pure eucalyptus oil. I like diffusing this one as well. Wow, Oof. cleans my fucking sinuses, cleans my lungs out. We have a Target receipt. It's blurry, so I can't even see it. Another receipt, this one is from The Habit Burger Grill. And, uh, I just got french fries that day because I wasn't particularly hungry when I was with in the company of good friends. I was a happy, happy, appreciative boy. So this is a little makeshift mask thing. Instead of wrapping it around your ear where it could hurt and be like, owie, owie, my ear out. You wrap the elastic around the buttons. It came from a button up shirt. We just cut it up, put the thing around the thing, put it around my head, bada bing, bada boom. My ears were saved. Thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. We've got some hair ties. They're probably dusty. Oh, they're actually kind of like Halloween colored. Look at that. Got orange, purple, and black. That's very much me, by the way. Anything Halloween colored is highly, highly me. We have a pen, a red pen. It doesn't smell like anything. I use it to mark my book that I'm currently reading. And I haven't marked the book because I'm trying to just finish it already. <laughs> what do you think about marking books, by the way? How do you feel about that? A lot of people have different opinions on whether they should annotate in books or not. Personally, I like it. Um, it leaves my marking in something, right? And you never know where that book is going to end up. I actually like buying used books and seeing what people have written in them. So this right here is actually all one thing. This is my money box. It is one of my spiritual practices, one of my I guess witchy practices, and we're not going to go into that right now. We're not going to go into the box either. That is very, very private, but it's how I manifest money. I'm just going to say it works. And that's all you need to know about that, sister. Mwah, mwah, mwah. This is a little note, obviously. It's for, do you remember? my this shelf right here when it was over those little candles that were lit this controls them so i can have them on have them on for four hours and then they turn off automatically after four hours so it's nice to go to sleep to that like nice little flickering light and it's not an actual fire in your room which can be dangerous we have a highlighter and the highlighter i'm also using with the pen to mark the book that i'm reading which is um over there I had shown it last time. There's a lot of dust flying around. That is because this is dusty. Remember you are dust. And to dust, you shall return. Can you tell I grew up Catholic? God. Post-its, which I was also using for the book, primarily the red one because I like color coding and that's why the pen was red as well. Nothing exciting about this. I'm, I'm not gonna smell it because it's full of dust. Narciso Rodriguez. For her, for me, yes. I don't consider myself gender fluid or non-binary. I consider myself non-misgenderable. Meaning, you can call me whatever you want and I won't give a shit. You can say I'm a he, you can say I'm a she, you can say I'm a, I don't know, whatever you want. Call me whatever you want, I literally don't care. That's not to say that I would never respect someone else's pronouns. 
because that's very important. I absolutely do respect everybody who respects me. In my case, I've had people say, oh, is it okay to call you queen? Of course it's okay to call me queen. Is it okay? Oh, no, I, she, I meant he. I'm like, unmisgenderable. I take no offense. I feel no offense. I'm a spiritual being living this human experience. Spiritual beings have no gender. Spiritual beings have no sex. It's just spirit. It's just a, a, a light. I am that light. You're the light too. Don't get me wrong. You're all, everybody is light. This identity that we're currently living in right now is just the mask. And you know, eventually we take off the mask or wake up from the dream, whatever it is that you want to call it. And we go back to being spirit. We go back to being light or we venture off into some other plane of existence. I, I don't know how it works. All I know is I'm unmisgenderable. So call me what you want. So call me by your name. Call me what you want. Anyway, mm, hang on. Oh, I have the noir on this finger. Hang on. Why can't I smell it? Oh, there it is. There it is. It's a very soft yet powerful smell. I think more people should wear fragrances from outside of their comfort zone, outside of their gender. Explore. Some of these, like, Sometimes you just want to smell like a fancy lawyer in a pantsuit in the 80s. I have a movie ticket. Wow, from when I went to see It in 2017. I promise this has not been on the shelf since 2017 because I didn't even have this shelf in 2017. I don't know how this ended up here. I went with my friend Allie to see It at 10.35 in the morning and I actually remember this. This was right after it was a hurricane that hit it was september 13th oh my god it's my dad's birthday it was right after this hurricane hit i remember the movie theater looked absolutely just poor thing like the sign the lights were like had fallen out <laughs> yeah it was it wasn't good it wasn't good it was a hurricane after all but we went to see the movie anyway because we're bad bitches you can't spell bitch without it you heard that, anyways? My last fragrance is this mystery vial right here. I wonder what it is. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's like, oh my god. What could it be? It's like, um, it's, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Makes me do that face. This is Florida water. All those cheap colognes that you see in like Target or bodegas. I say Target. I used to be these used to sell at Target. I haven't seen it at Target in like years. But you know, you see it at like dollar stores, bodegas. I love this. I got this at <laughs> this bottle looks very expensive, right? Got it at the dollar spot at Target for like I think it was three dollars. I think at most I paid five bucks. And it looks super fancy. And then the the water, Florida water is like four dollars or something like that. But all together, it, this looks like, ooh, right? Let's go ahead and get to the books. We have the first one. Okay, so I started reading this. Clearly, Nobody by Mark Lamont Hill. Well, Casualties of America's War on the Vulnerable from Ferguson to Flint. And let me tell you, I got about halfway through. It really hurts reading this. Like it. It's devastating to really read and learn everything that's happened that has led up to this point. I only stopped reading it for now because I had to go over to the anti-fascist handbook. My knees are crack a lack and oh my god, ow. I haven't been on my knees this long, usually they finish by now. I am in a lot of pain. The condemnation of blackness, race, crime, and the making of modern urban America by Khalil Gibran Muhammad. I have not read this one just yet, but it is definitely on my list. It is a hefty one. She's got, uh, she's got a lot of words. She's got a lot of words. But I will absorb and learn and grow. This is my current journal that I'm writing in right now. It's Beetlejuice inspired. And I really like it. It's got pretty good pages. So, so far I've written this much. Hopefully I can get back to meditating soon. I haven't meditated in like over a week. Yikes. And this is the journal 
that I did the flip through. Go ahead and click it up there. It's up there. You don't have to click it now. You can click it later, but you know. Just get back to it, okay? Check out the flip through. How to be an anti-racist by Ibram X. Kendi. Have not read this one either. Again, this, all these books, I bought them all together from bookoutlet.com, not today's sponsor. I'm not doing that bit again. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and other stories. You know, it's really funny. I read The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Have not read the rest of the books. That's the stories here, but I read that one. They started off the story by saying, everybody knows the story now, but when this first came out, nobody saw it coming. This was like the plot twist of a lifetime. Just think about that. It's the same as, you know, Luke, I'm your father, Snape killing Dumbledore, like everybody knows it. The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. I read The Metamorphosis, have not read the other stories. Can you imagine waking up and being a bug? I'm an insect now. I'm not even a tiny insect. I'm a giant insect. It just feels annoying. Origin by Damn Brown. Where am I? Damn Brown. His first book sucked ass. His second book sucked less ass. The first Robert Langdon book, Angels and Demons, was good. Then came Da Vinci Code. Then came The Lost Symbol. Then came Inferno, and then came Origin. I love his books. Some people call them guilty pleasures. Personally, I don't think anybody should feel guilty about anything that brings them pleasure. Like your shit. And I like that shit. I know it's shit. But I like it. A little bit of problematic, pro problematicism? Problematicism? Problem the Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith. Now, if you don't know, Robert Galbraith is secretly JK Rowling. And I say secretly, very loosely, but I mean, it's literally written right on the damn dust jacket. I haven't read it, and I got all of these on discount, the Robert Galbraith books. And this is the next one, The Silkworm. Please be- <coughs> I just swallowed dust. Please be aware that I got these before JK decided to be a trans exclusionist. And I got them because I saw this video talking about if you ever want to read, you know, Harry Potter, but like, it's like a more serious level. It's like an adult Harry Potter, you can read this, like the main character is kind of like that. I don't know if it is or not, because I haven't read it yet. I don't know if I will at this point. I have three of them. Career of Evil. Do I really want to listen to a trans exclusionist? No. Stephen King, however, is fucking awesome. Just after sunset. So all of these are hardcovers, and the rest of these are actually Stephen King, except for the last one. And we'll get there. I've read most of these. <gasps> you know, I was wondering where this bookmark went. This bookmark, my sister bought it for me when she went out with her best friend once to this mall. I didn't go, but she got me this. She was like, oh, so I was like, oh my god. Because I, I used to love money. I mean, I still do, but I used to love collecting money. I mean, I still do. It's just been in this book this entire time. Another Stephen King, Dr. Sleep. Eh, I'll be honest. I wasn't too keen on it. Was it really necessary? I feel like I could have stood on its own without it being Danny Torrance, without it being The Shining. I don't know. Like, I, I, it didn't feel like a The Shining continuation. It didn't feel like a story belonging in The Shining to me. But then again, that's just me. I liked it. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. I haven't seen the movie, by the way. I did hear that the movie is more like the movie version of The Shining, and the book follows the book version of The Shining, so it's like, how many universes am I supposed to keep up with here? Revival. Stephen King novel. Have not read it. It's been on my shelf since... Oh my god. Is that a dead bug? <laughs> 11 22 63. I actually really liked this one. I know that it's a, I think it's a, a series on Hulu right now. I haven't seen it. I do want to though, and I want to see um, the Creep Show series. I think it's on Shudder. There's another, I think Castle Rock is on Hulu. I want to see all these freaking series, man. I did watch the Under the Dome series, and yikes. Oof, that went off the rails. I used to have the book. I guess I figured I'm never going to read it again because <laughs> it's so fucking huge. It was a good book. It was just giant. I really liked the book and I really liked this book. Well, spoiler alert. I liked what he did with um, time travel. I thought it was a very 
very nuanced take on time travel because I feel like every every single time travel story has been done. Full Dark, No Stars. I've read some of these. They're short stories, kind of, sort of. Actually, no. They're... <gasps> I'm such a fucking liar. I haven't read any of these. BRB, I'm going to cancel myself. <laughs> the Outsider by Stephen King. I've also not read this one. I promise there's a lot of Stephen King books that I have read. I just have not read his newer stuff. I don't know what I'm waiting for. Another new Stephen King. It's The Institute. <laughs> have not read it. I don't know what I'm waiting for. I do like, however, the new, like, the look, right? I like the look. I liked when Stephen King was doing that thing in the 80s with, like, the bold, the bold Stephen <laughs> so fucking cool if it bleeds which i think is short stories kind of sort of i think they're like short novels i still don't know what classifies a short story and a novel and a short novel and a novel and a novel and a... <laughs> the bazaar of bad dreams this one i started i've read two stories okay these i've read <laughs> cell by stephen king when i read it i liked it but then again, I think I was like 12 and I didn't have a cell phone. I was 12, I was young, I was dumb. What is this picture of Stephen King, by the way? Sir, also wait real quick. Oh my God, I bought this. I still have the receipt in here. I bought this in 2008. I was 15. I had very poor taste and I still did. I've heard it sucks. I have fond memories of it, but I was a child, so. The bio in the back. Stephen King lives in Maine with his wife, the novelist Tabitha King. He does not own a cell phone. I'm sure 12 years later, that does not still stand. Speaking of the stand, I think there's a new series coming up about the stand. <laughs> Mr. Mercedes. This one I did read and whew, I really liked this one. I liked the trilogy. It was so, ooh, it starts off very down to earth, very like, here right very present and then as each book comes along which we have this one we have finders keepers as well and this one's more oh, this one's really good we have end of watch i will be honest the ending kind of hit hard what's your favorite stephen king book or book in general blind willow sleeping woman by haruki murakami i I have not read this one. Started really liking Haruki Murakami. He's a Japanese author. My first book of his was 1Q84, which I have down here. And, <clears throat> and I'm excited to read these. I read 1Q84 and then I read Colorless Tsukuru Tazaki. I'm not sure how I feel about that one, I will be honest. But I did like 1Q84 and I read uh, The Strange Library too, which I will get there. I forgot to mention, I'm sure you remember seeing an empty space in between the books. That was originally taken up by the seventh novel of the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. I have two copies. I have one up there with my um, full, oh, I can't wait to get to that shelf. Point is, I gave it to my sister like last weekend, so that's why it's missing. But it was here for a long, long time. Anyway, my needs are about to just exit the simulation. So let's go ahead and clean this baby up and make her pretty. Let's go. So as you can imagine, after having been on my knees for an entire hour, I didn't feel like recording the end piece in front of the freshly cleaned and organized, or should I say reorganized shelf. So I'm just doing this lazy voiceover instead. Now, before this, I used to have the books ordered in like stylistic form, but I went ahead and instead did it alphabetically. It's better that way. It's prettier that way. And I also added a book, a challenge from the actor, from a shelf below it. And here it is in all of its glory. Isn't that a lovely shelf? Was the amethyst in the other one already? Was the amethyst shown in what I think it was? Well, I put it there because, um, yeah. And these vials, these little tiny Lila bow or Lila bow vials look pretty bitchin' in front of these classic books. 
So thank you for watching. I would greatly appreciate it if you liked and commented a little something. You could just say hi. I'll say hi back. I'm not mean, I think. Um, you can subscribe if you want. I would appreciate it. I think that would be pretty... I think that would be pretty bitchin', actually, to subscribe. So, why not? <laughs> and I'll see you on the next shelf tour, or with whatever else I come out with. Most likely within the next week. Ooh. Stay safe. Take care. Love you lots. But love yourself more. Toodle.